The two new MacBooks are closer in specs than any MacBook Air or MacBook Pro before. This is mainly thanks to the M1 chip inside these two laptops. But there are many other similarities too. The screen, the battery, the keyboard, the webcam, and storage options are all nearly identical, making the decision to spend an extra 480 New Zealand dollars on the Pro or not tricky. You can purchase the M1 MacBook Air for $1,749 and the M1 MacBook Pro for $2,299 here in New Zealand. That's quite a difference. If you're thinking about buying the new M1 MacBook Air or MacBook Pro and you're not sure which one is right for you, the best place to start your buying journey is with the differences. So here are the seven things that separates this year's MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. As I said before, both devices have the excellent new M1 chip inside, but only the MacBook Pro has an internal fan. This means the MacBook Pro is able to carry out heavy duty tasks for longer because its fan will literally keep the M1 chip cool and at an optimum temperature. The MacBook Air, however, is fanless, which means it will slow down when things get hot. This, of course, is only a problem if you can be pushing the MacBook Air to the limit. Anecdotally, I've been using both the Air and the Pro for the past couple of weeks. And I haven't noticed the fan kicking in on the Pro or the air slowing down once. The only time I've managed to engage the fan on the MacBook Pro is by running benchmarking software on a loop, which isn't a real life environment, I know. But here's the deal, and it's the same as previous Air versus Pro debates. If you're a Pro, you already know that you're a Pro. You'll likely need a MacBook that can sustain performance for long periods of time. So get the MacBook Pro. If you're not sure if you're gonna push the MacBook to its limits, and you're not sure if the work you do is intensive or not, get the Air. By the way, having an embarrassing number of tabs opening in Chrome doesn't make you a pro. Both of the new M1 MacBooks can handle this sort of load without any trouble or slow down at all. It's another example of how and why these MacBooks are so good. The biggest difference you'll notice from an aesthetic perspective, other than the classic wedge shape of the Air, is that the Pro has a touch bar, whereas the Air has physical function keys. Personally, I think this is a good thing as I love the touch bar. However, I know there are a lot of passionate opinions out there about the touch bar and how customers wish they could configure their MacBook Pros to come with function keys instead. But we're not there yet. The MacBook Pro has a slightly bigger battery than the MacBook Air. In reality, the battery life of both these laptops is insanely good. Expect between 12 and 15 hours of battery life from the Air and between 14 and 17 hours from the Pro, while doing normal, non-crazy computing things. The Pro also comes with a 61 watt USB-C power adapter, whereas the Air only has a 30 watt USB-C charger. Okay, colors. The MacBook Pro is only available in two colors, space gray and silver but you can get the MacBook Air in space grey, silver and gold. This is the gold. Apple made a leap with its laptop speakers back in 2019 when it gave the 16-inch MacBook Pro a high-fidelity six-speaker system with force-cancelling woofers. Unfortunately, the new 13-inch MacBook Pro stereo speakers with high dynamic range aren't in the same league. They sound fine and warm, but not as good as a 16 inch laptop from last year. The MacBook Air is a step down again, with speakers that aren't special at all. The new Pro has a studio quality three mic array with directional beamforming, while the Air just has regular mics inside. In the real world, this won't make much of a difference to users unless they're looking to record podcasts or professional quality audio on their MacBooks. Both MacBooks have a 13.3 inch LED backlit display with IPS technology. They're both Retina displays and they both have True Tone technology, but the Air can only reach 400 nits of brightness, while the Pro can reach 500. This is slightly confusing. The MacBook Air and Pro have the same M1 system on a chip. Both devices have the big little eight core CPU with four performance cores and four efficiency cores and both have the same 16-core neural engine. But the entry-level MacBook Air only comes with a 7-core GPU, while the entry-level MacBook Pro has an 8-core GPU. It's a bit of a niche point though, because you can configure your MacBook Air to have the same 8-core GPU. So, pfft. 
There's also an eighth difference, sort of. They're different size and weights. Is that really a difference? I'm not sure, but they weigh different amounts and they look a little bit different. The rest is the same. The storage options are the same. You can get it in 256, 512, one terabyte or two terabyte SSDs. They come with eight gigabytes or 16 gigabytes of RAM. There's a touch ID sensor, two Thunderbolt USB 4 ports. They both have the same crappy 720p FaceTime HD camera. The rest is the same. Okay, so which MacBook is right for you? Well, like I said earlier in the video, if you're a pro, you likely know that you're a pro. So if you're gonna be doing high intensive tasks for a long time, I think you should get the new MacBook Pro. If you're not sure if you're a pro, then you're probably not a pro at all. And the MacBook Air is just fine. An M1 chip inside, it flies, you're gonna love it, and the battery life goes on for days. It's more affordable. If you're not a pro, go for this one. If you are a pro, this is brilliant. You're gonna love it. I can't wait for the bigger 16 inch version. If you're looking for more tech reviews, we do them every week. And if you don't hate me, hit subscribe.